Today I've got the rudimental control practice pad. And here's how I'm gonna do this video. First thing I'm gonna talk about the company and the owner, one and the same. And then I'm gonna speak objectively about the pad, its construction, things like that. And then I will play on it with four different heads, different sounds, different options there. Then I will give some positives and negatives on the pad. And then I will compare the pad to some other of the competitors that people might be wondering about. I will put some timestamps in the show notes below so you can follow along if you wanna to jump to different sections. And before I forget, I have a coupon code for you all. Snare Man will get you 10% off on purchases from Rudimental Control. So let's go. Speaking first about the company and the owner, Rudimental Control is owned and run by Nissan Ballard. I've spoken with him several times on the phone. I've texted back and forth with him. We've emailed back and forth. I always wanna speak with the owners of the companies of the pads that I'm reviewing to get a sense of where the company and the owner's coming from, the design and the philosophy and everything behind the pad and the company. And in many cases, very much the same. The owners, because it's a small company, in this case, one person, they are well invested in the company and in the product. They're very knowledgeable about the product because they designed it so they can answer all the questions you have about it. They wanna give you good customer service because they want you to buy their product. They wanna give good delivery times because again, same reason. And so if you have any questions that I can't answer, maybe Nissan will answer some questions in the comments if there are any, but I'm sure he'll be happy to speak with you by text or phone or email or whatever if you've got any questions about the product. Again, great guy, just like all the other owners I've spoken with. Nissan is originally from the South, currently lives in Texas, so everything with this pad is US based. He was in the Southern University snare line back in 1995-96. He's been a barber for the past 26 years and then during COVID got back into drumming and most recently was in the Troopers Legacy course snare line and I got to see them perform live at DCI in 2023. Cool show. Nissan slash Rude Metal Control does have a presence on Facebook and Instagram. I'll put a link down below. You can check out his Instagram page. I think he's got about 4,000 followers and you can look at some of the other pads he's made. You can watch him play some, you can see him that sort of thing. Check out some of his videos and his Instagram page. Now, before I get into the pad, let me just mention a few other things that Rudimental Control sells. They sell these Got Chops shirts, $25. You can pick them up on their website. And then there are also the Nissan Bauer designed drumsticks. He designed these himself. They are a nice beefy stick painted white. On them, there's the Rudimental Control Nissan Bauer logo there. And just as a comparison, people always wanna know what sticks are you using in your videos. I think people think, myself included, when I watch other videos, so don't feel bad. If I use those sticks, I'll play like that. Again, same <laughs> same way. But I usually use the uh, Innovative Percussion Tom Rarick sticks. This is what Blue Coats use. And as a comparison, these sticks are 17 inches. The Innovative Control sticks are 17.1 inches. The Tom Rarick sticks are 0.704 inches in diameter, and these are 0.72 inches in diameter. So just a hint longer and a hint beefier. They are painted white and they are a medium heavy stick and they have a really nice feel. They've got a meaty bead to them. So check these out. Rudimental control, drumsticks, $25 on the website. You can pick these up as well. Moving on to the construction of the pad. This is his blackout pad. I've seen other colors of his pad. This one is all black as you can see. It's a 13 inch pad weighs in at seven pounds, 10 ounces. So it's not super light, but it is a beefy, well-built, solid pad. The head that comes with it is a two-ply black Mylar head, apparently designed by Nissan, with the rudimental control logo up here. The rim underneath it is a heavy-duty, high-grade black nickel hoop. Moving down, what would typically be the lugs on a drum are replaced by black oxide alloy steel socket head screws, 3 16th inch. So if you have an Allen wrench, that is what's going to fit in there to tighten and loosen those. When you take off the head, there is a layer of felt and that appears to be over a layer of cork. You can see where it's coming up just a little bit here. And people are always curious what's under the head. So there you go for that part of the construction. Underneath that is the base. It's a solid wood base. Again, very sturdy, solid construction. On the bottom, again, black lacquer and there are felt feet around the edges to help be kind to whatever you're sitting it on. And then for an extra $25, you can also have whatever logo or design you want engraved into there. And he was kind enough to put the Blue Coats logo on there for me. And the full width of the pad is about 15 and a half inches. All right, let's see what this thing sounds like. Now, first critique I have to mention because it's going to be obvious the way I'm gonna play on it is that the bottom of this pad, as I mentioned, is just flat. It's 15 and a half inches wide 
and both of the snare stands that I have, I have this tall Gibraltar one, people have asked me about it, I'll put some links down below, you can check it out, and then this small drum set stand. I open them up both all the way as far as the arms here will go, and as wide as I open it, the pad will not fit all the way into those arms. I can close it up some, and then it kind of rests on top of it, but as it is, it's open all the way, and because of that, I'm gonna just set it into it. It's gonna be a, a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna play kind of old school, traditional as it were. A little bit of an angle. Also, as I mentioned, I'm gonna play on four different heads, which apparently have different feels and sounds. So first is going to be the rudimental control head that comes on it. Second is a Remo Emperor coated head. And then there is a two-ply head with oil between the layers and then a Evans hybrid head. This is what a lot of the cores are using these days, so kind of a Kevlar style head for perhaps maybe more of a marching feel. We'll see. We'll take a look at the different sounds and the different feels of them. First I have the rudimental control head. This is a two-ply black Mylar head and it's going to have a Mylar head type feel. Either an old school marching snare with a Mylar head or a tenor drum with a Mylar head. Something I've noticed with this pad is that it has a different feel, a different sound, a different timber, as it were, at tap height versus accent height. Next is the Remo Emperor Coated Head. This is the type of head you might find on a concert snare or a drum set snare, and while you could still totally play on it with big beefy marching sticks, I would say that's not the best use for this head. Because of the type of head it is, maybe some concert sticks are better. These are my very first pair of drum sticks. I think some Ludwig 1As all the way back from seventh grade. So say you are in concert band or orchestra and you're playing maybe Radetzky March. Something like that, that might be a better use for this type of head. Also because it's textured, If you had brushes, you could practice that on this head. So the nice thing about this pad is that it's versatile, that you can put different heads on it for different feels and different type of practicing. Head number three is the two-ply black head with oil between the two layers. If you've seen these heads, it's kind of like there's a layer of northern lights between the two layers, kind of a colorful layer of oil. And around the edges, there is a dampening ring, which on this doesn't matter because the whole head is sitting on a piece of cork and felt, so that dampening ring is not doing anything. So this head. Out of the three so far, not my favorite. Not a bad head. It's just a little less reboundy than the original rudimental control head, the first one that I did, has a little less difference in sound between the tap and the accent. It's fine, it's a fine head. I just like the original rudimental control head better. And the last head of the bunch is the Evans Hybrid Head. This is the head that a lot of drum corps and marching bands are using. This is a Kevlar style head compared to the Mylar ones that I had on here before. This head is going to have the most rebound, the most articulation. Before I get into the official positives and negatives, let me just do some follow-up on the heads. 
Now my favorite heads in order, the Evans Hybrid, followed by the original rudimental control head, followed by the black two-ply with the oil, followed by the Emperor coated head. Granted, these days I'm not doing anything that involves a drum with an Emperor coated head. I do think that the Evans Hybrid does have a little bit more rebound and articulation as compared to the rudimental control. However, the head is just essentially a layer of something, Kevlar, plastic, mylar, whatever, over that cork and felt playing surface. So it's not like on a regular drum where you're tightening it over something. It's just really covering that surface. But despite that, the Evans Hybrid did have a little bit more articulate and a little bit more rebound type sound in comparison. Now for the official positives and negatives. First, the construction of the pad. This is a really well-made pad. You can feel the quality when you pick it up. It has a nice heft to it, and this pad is going to last you for a really long time. Along with the quality of the construction is the quality of the feel when you play on it. Is it a feel like a real drum? It doesn't, but nothing feels like a real drum. But as far as pads go with real heads, this is a really nice feeling pad with really nice feel, really nice rebound, and nice rim and everything that goes along with that. Next, the company and everything is out of Texas. Nissan lives in Texas, the company's out of Texas, and so it's US made, US sourced, and it also ships from Texas, which is going to cut down on both shipping times and shipping costs. When I calculated it to me, shipping cost was about $20, and the processing time is about two to three weeks because these pads are all hand constructed by Nissan. So there's a little bit of lead time in that, but you're getting a pad constructed to what you wanted. Also, there is a little bit of customization you can get. As I've demonstrated here, there are different heads you can put on it. It comes by default with that rudimental control head. There are some other head options, however, of note, if you're going to get something like the Evans Hybrid, that is going to add some money to it because the head is more expensive for Nissan to get. So it's going to cost you more than just the original head. But if you so desire, you can either get yourself an aftermarket head of any 13 inch variety, or you could probably get him to put it on from the beginning for a little bit of extra money. There's also the customization you can do on the bottom. If you want to put different logos or anything else you want there. And then all this is his blackout one. I have seen some different color options on his Instagram page you can check out. So he might be able to make you some other options there. Now for some negatives. First, the price, $175 plus shipping. When I calculated it to me, it was $20 shipping. So about $200. Although throw in that 10% discount coupon code SNAREMAN, that'll take you back down to that 175, 180 price range. So not a small amount of money for some people, but you are getting a lot of product for your money and it's going to last for a long time. Next is the size and weight. It's not a small lightweight pad. So while this is a great pad potentially to have at home, it's maybe not the pad that you're going to throw in your backpack and take to drumline practice. You could, but it's not a small or light pad. There are maybe some better options for that. Next improvement I'd like to see is that the socket screws, I would like them to be real lugs. I know that he maybe had some trouble sourcing them and these are very sturdy, but for ease of use, everyone that's drumming has a drum key and maybe not everyone has a 3 16 bit to use for these that maybe you have to take out of your packet of, of uh, Allen wrenches. And again, not that you're gonna need to be tightening this down very often, but I would like to have a more universal tightening for it aside from this. Also of note, aside from using this, you can also get a 3 16th bit for a drill. Say you're gonna be doing a lot of head changes for like a video, for instance. You can get that in a little screwdriver and that's another option for easy and fast head changes. Next is the width of it. Like I mentioned, it's 15 and a half inches wide and because of that, I was not able to put it into the arms of a stand. I could fold the arms up a little bit so that the pad was sitting on top of that, but then it was a little bit less stable and moved around a little bit when I was playing on them. And lastly, this pad, the one that I got, has just a little bit of wobble to it. It's not huge, but there is a little bit. And when you're playing on it, if you're in the center, not a big deal. But if you get up to the edge, again, just a little bit of wobble. You can't see that the pad is warped. That, that base looks straight to me, but on the surface, it's a little bit. And I think it, there's an easy solution for this right now on the bottom. There are eight felt feet, which I know cover the eight lug holes, but potentially getting just three, either felt or rubber feet. You can even get some your own if you're so inclined. And just three feet, you can't have a wobble with three points of contact. That would solve an easy solution to any potential wobble that a pad may or may not have.
And lastly, some quick pad comparisons. A lot of people want to know how does this pad compare to this pad, vice versa. And so just I'm going to take a couple of popular pads and just comment on how they're similar or different. These are all great pads. I really have nothing negative to say about any of these except maybe this one. Uh, so I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. It's just a matter of what you're looking for as far as price and size and weight and sound and feel and all that. So just some quick notes on some comparisons for popular pads. First of all, Zymox, we all know the Zymox story. It is a nice pad, it's a nice product. I still don't recommend giving Zymox any money because as a company, they still seem to be not amazing. The difference in the feel of this, yes, it has their snare mechanism. The Zymox pad feels closer to playing on like a hard plastic board. Has a very short articulate sound, whereas the rudimental control pad is closer to playing on a real drum because it's a real head. So entirely different sound. Still don't recommend Zymox. Ram pad, great pad, similar idea type of design. Real head, real rim, pulled down over a playing surface. This has a really nice feel to it. It's lightweight, it's compact. I think it's about $100. Uh, it has a really nice rebound on it. The only few downsides I would say about this one is that it's smaller, so the muscle memory is not going to quite be there. And also because the playing surface on this is domed up, the rim is actually below the playing surface. So when you go to do shots eventually, the stick is actually angled down a little bit. Great pad, great feel, just some differences there as mentioned. Off-world, again, an entirely different feel. Great pad, it has their snare mechanism depending on which one you want to get. You can take it in and out. The feel on this one, again, entirely different. A little bit closer to the Zymox as far as playing on a board because, again, it's just that hard playing surface with that uh, laminate on top of it. Great pad, lighter weight, you can take it with you. It is definitely louder inside your house. Ooh, it's a loud pad. Great pad, again, just different design, different philosophy, different type, check, check that one out. Perhaps the most similar is the rudimental drummer to the rudimental control. Very much the exact same type of design. Big difference is rudimental drummer is from the Netherlands. Lead time is five to six weeks and shipping is to me when I calculated it, about $40. This is their 14 inch pad. They also make a 13 inch pad. The construction is the same base, real rim. In this case, it's both the same heads. This one does have real drum lugs, which I appreciate. And on the bottom, they have these holes for feet of a stand and then the three rubber feet for sitting it down. I think these would be easy additions to the rudimental control pad. This one is heavier. This one is nine pounds, nine ounces. Again, this is their 14 inch version. This one is six pounds, 12 ounces. This one shipped to me was about $180. This one shipped to me is $245. Two to three weeks lead time, five to six weeks lead time. The feels are similar yet very different. The rudimental drummer pad, the base underneath this is a rubber, almost like the bottom of a mouse pad. And so it has a softer feel. Underneath this, as I've shown, is cork and heavy duty felt. There's again, they're similar yet different. A little quieter, a little louder, a little softer, a little firmer. Rebound wise, I think the rudimental control has a little bit more rebound. Can I pick one over the other? I think they're both great pads. US made, shorter, faster, cheaper. I think it just depends on what you're looking for. They're, they're both, again, they're both great pads. They're just different, similar, but different. All right, some closing thoughts. I've really covered all this, but I'm just gonna say some of it again. Rudimental control, US made, US sourced, US company by US. It is a great pad, feels great, sounds great, great rebound, great articulation customizable with both the heads. If you look on his Instagram page, he does a bunch of different things for a bunch of different companies like the Atlanta Drum Academy. They do some amazing stuff down there. He made a bunch of drum pads for them. You can check those out. He just does some really great stuff for great people. So I wholeheartedly recommend checking out Rudimental Control. Use this code SNAREMAN for your 10% discount and pick up your pad.